Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we once again are going to be talking about fish, and specifically fish communication, and more specifically, talking fish. That is fish making sounds to communicate. And this is something that I have kind of briefly mentioned in one of the previous videos that you can find somewhere in the description, or that should be popping up somewhere right there at some point. But today we're discussing something a little bit more exciting in terms of discoveries and something a little bit more interesting and something that many of us have never had any idea about. It turns out fish, yes, this fish right here, actually a lot of fish, talk. And when I say talk, I mean they actually make sounds to communicate with one another. And even though it's something that was known with some fishes, specifically some of the rare types of fish, in this case, the new study discovers that it's actually an extremely prevalent phenomenon, with nearly two-thirds of fish out there potentially exhibiting a way to communicate through making different sounds. And that, to me at least, was sort of mind-blowing. With this particular new study that, as always, you can find in the description below, going through a little bit more detail. But let's discuss this in this video, and let's start with the brief summary of the last video about the talking fish focusing on the species you see right here, known as Mormiride, also sometimes referred to as the elephant fish. Now, in that video I mentioned that there is a type of a fish that mostly lives in Africa that has actually evolved an extremely complex way of communication that sort of resembles, well, really our communication, but they use electricity for this, mostly because of the region where they live and the murky waters where they reside. Either way though, their communication has been found to be extremely complex and seems to mimic a lot of the more complex animals out there. But in this case, this is communication. It's not really talking and it's not really making sounds. And in general, pretty much most fish communicate in one way or another. Some fish communicate through, for example, electricity, like marmorida or elephant fish. Some fish, like clownfish, communicate through body language, through basically various patterns of swimming or various interaction with their environment. And other fish can communicate through changes in their body or color communication. So there are a lot of different ways that fish have found to communicate underwater. But some fish have also been discovered to make certain sounds in certain situations. And you might have even experienced or heard this yourself. A really good example of this type of sound communication can generally be heard around any reef. If you went scuba diving or if you ever went snorkeling on a reef, you know that as soon as you dive into the water, suddenly things become extremely loud. There are all sorts of bubbling noises, there are all sorts of cracking noises, all sorts of scratching noises. It literally becomes sort of a cacophony of different types of sounds, with certain fish and certain types of crustaceans making the most noise. And interestingly enough, a lot of scientists in the last few years focused on studying these particular reef sounds, and they've actually learned quite a lot about them. There's a really interesting article from the conversation that I'm posting in the description that sort of goes in a little bit more detail about this, but in a nutshell, there have been some major discoveries in regards to the reef sounds when it comes to the coral health, specifically after the so-called bleaching events. You might already know that the coral bleaching usually occurs due to the sudden increases in temperature in the water, and so it's sort of been correlated with the global warming effects, uh, mostly in the oceans. And typically it can take anywhere from 10 to maybe even 30 years for coral to recover its health and to return back to normal. But a lot of studies from countries like Australia, where bleaching is a serious problem, discovered that, obviously, coral becomes different over time, and the sounds that are created by the creatures in a coral also change as well. This field even has its own name now. It's known as coral reef soundscape. And so, for example, a coral reef that's been bleached or doesn't have a lot of living coral in it will usually have a lot of high-frequency noises mostly containing areas with just a few fish and a lot of different material that's not particularly usable for fish relying on corals. Whereas coral that's relatively healthy will contain a lot of low frequency sounds and will also have quite a diverse amount of sounds as well. With a lot of this complexity of sound simply coming from the actual structure of the coral that usually creates a kind of a landscape that you expect from a coral reef. So in other words, here it's actually a combination of the sound made by various creatures on the reef, along with the structure of the reef that produces a kind of way acoustic oscillation. 
And over the past few years, several scientists and several studies have actually discovered that this is extremely important for both the longevity of the reef, but also for what happens to the reef afterwards. For example, several studies using fish larvae discovered that a lot of fish larvae, fish babies, will often follow a certain type of a sound and will always locate the reef they're looking for, even if they actually were spawned really far away. And even though originally scientists thought that maybe fish babies or fish larvae find the reefs randomly, completely by chance, this turns out to be completely wrong. They hear the reef and they follow the sound. Although in this case they also use the sense of smell, and once they get close enough, they also use the sense of sight. And this was even tested back in 2004 by basically creating artificial reef environments. So with certain reefs that played certain sounds, when the sounds were played over an actual speaker, it would lead to certain reef fish to be attracted to the sound, but yet other fish would be repelled by it. And so some fish that rely on the reef to survive will be attracted to it and will obviously make the reef a healthier place. Whereas fish that do not survive in areas with a lot of other fish around, specifically the fish that requires more privacy, would be most likely repelled by the sounds and would try to swim in the opposite direction. Suggesting, of course, that not only is the fish able to perceive the sounds and also to make those sounds, but also that we could potentially use this technique to maybe heal a lot of the reefs around the planet. Essentially attracting the fish to the reef by playing certain types of sounds. But these are some of the older discoveries when it comes to fish being able to perceive and to make sounds. It doesn't actually end there at all. As a matter of fact, some of the first discoveries from just a few years ago have already discovered that fish, just like birds, tend to actually make sounds during certain periods of the day, usually during dawn or dusk. And here we're not just talking about scraping sounds or sounds that would be related to maybe eating something, like the reef itself, we're talking about all sorts of sounds that are created in a variety of ways. And that's of course where that new study comes in, describing something that a lot of us have never known before. Different types of fish seem to have evolved different ways to communicate vocally or by making sounds in the last 150 million years or so, with the catfish right here being the most talkative and the most successful fish species to be able to create sounds. But more interestingly, they discovered that of approximately 34,000 different species studied, two-thirds of them had an ability to make sounds to communicate. Or to rephrase this, two-thirds of all of the fish studied were basically able to vocalize their communication. And I don't want to use the word talk here because usually talking refers to what we do, but it looks like fish also talk in some way or another. And they found several different ways this is usually done in different species. So for example, some species use their teeth, they grind their teeth to create certain types of sounds. Some fish will use motion of the water or essentially splashing to communicate with the members nearby. But the most common way for communication across various species of fish seems to be related with the muscles surrounding their bladder, the swim bladder that controls the buoyancy of a fish. And they do so by usually contracting the muscles around the bladder extremely fast, with the contraction then producing the frequency that can be heard by other fish. And in this particular case, the scientists provide several examples as well. Here's, for example, the voices of so-called long-spine squirrel fish. Here is the same for the fish known as the midshipmen. With the sounds you heard being made specifically for various types of communication. We don't really know what they're talking about, but this is just the first step. And on top of this, when studying various fossils of ancient fish, in this case, the scientists have also discovered that this particular ability to talk or to make sounds to communicate has evolved independently at least 33 times in various types of fish, with the oldest fish being approximately 155 million years old, which might have actually been around the same time when other animals, including, for example, dinosaurs, started to make sounds to communicate as well. And that, of course, suggests that, well, first of all, fish communication by vocalization seems to be extremely important and very successful, which is why various fish tend to evolve it over time. 
but at the same time, certain fish, like catfish right here, or certain other types of fish like toadfish, the fish that generally has quite an interesting appearance, tend to be some of the more talkative fish discovered so far. They tend to produce all sorts of sounds to communicate with some of the neighboring fish. But what exactly they're saying, that's of course not something we can generally answer right now. Although it's assumed that it's about food, possibly about avoiding certain types of danger, and very likely about mating, because it's always about mating. But for now, that's I guess all I wanted to mention in this video. If you haven't checked out the previous video about the elephant fish, check that video out as well, because it kind of relates to something a little bit more complex. Either way though, these are some of the most incredible and most mind-blowing findings about something we kind of take for granted, fish. I mean, the idea of talking fish does sound like something from a fairy tale, but it seems to be actually scientifically accurate. Fish do seem to communicate vocally, just maybe not by using vocal cords. They tend to produce sounds different ways. Anyway, on that note, check out the links in the description below, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.